At the BMCLA, we have four sets of fees. A non-refundable application fee, which is needed to process your application for a license. Once your application is approved, then there is the licensing fee, which includes the administrative fees and a one-time sign-on fee for the seed to sale program, which is necessary to track your medicinal cannabis plant or byproducts. Along with the due diligence fees, which would only be applicable to our international applicants, as an international body has to do the due diligence check. The licensing fees can either be paid in one lump sum or 60% paid upfront and the remaining 40% can be paid monthly, quarterly or annually over the next three years. So for example, if you are a tier one cultivator you can, and you paid your 60% upfront, the remaining $11,880 can be paid over three years. All fees have to be paid through EasyPay and all licenses obtained from the BMCLA are valid for five years. Presently, this is the only jurisdiction that does this. That, my friends, are a few facts on fees. Should you need more information, you can always check out our website www.bmcla.bb. Typically, there are four plans. The operational plan, the security plan, the disposal plan, and the premises plan. For most persons who are applying for the research and development, laboratory, cultivator, processor, and retail distribution license categories, all four of these plans apply. However, for persons who are applying for transport, import, and export, there is uh, no requirement for a disposal plan to be submitted. In the disposal plan, persons uh, will identify how waste will be treated on site and will outline uh, the methodology to be used. With regard to the security plan, the security plan will highlight uh, where uh, security features specific to the operation will be located to secure your premises with regard to your uh, security requirements. The premises plan will lay out in detail where uh, your facility will conduct operations specific to your license category. And the operational plan will outline how your business will operate as it relates to the uh, medicinal cannabis uh, protocols. Please note that special care must be taken to the type of license category you are applying for as well as the suite of licenses because these plan requirements may change. Medicinal versus recreational cannabis. It's usually the hot topic. In this area, I prefer to talk about usage and procedure versus plant. Cannabis is cannabis, no matter how you look at it. There are various kinds, if we're talking about indica or sativa, sativa there are various um, strains. We could be talking about white willow or widow's birch, but cannabis remains cannabis. Use says, am I using this for a high, for pleasure, or am I using this for a medical purpose to try to correct an ailment which I have? Procedure says, was this grown through procedures that I can, one, can be replicated, two, that procedure can be followed all the way back to the plant, and three, that procedure that was used to grow this cannabis was done in a manner that is for the health and well-being of not only the plant, but the person who ingests the process. I often like to talk about this like an ad Advil. You want to know what's in your Advil. You want to know each chemical component, and you want to be sure that when that chemical component was created or grown in the, space, in the case of cannabis, it was done in a manner that was healthy, it was done in a manner that is free of any harmful kinds of things and contaminants, which could then contaminate your body. And that's the reality of medicinal cannabis. It is cannabis grown in a procedure which is traceable, 
which is done to correct and exacting standards because at the end of the day, it is meant to be a medicine. Recreational cannabis, while well, some of it is grown to reasonable standards, I'm told, some of it is also grown in less than desirable ways because it's illegal. And that, while it does provide a high to the body, can in some case also provide contaminants to the body. And so we have to be careful when we're talking about recreational versus medicinal cannabis. And so in the medicinal cannabis case, particularly for the industry, there's standards to which you grow, there's standards for your extraction, and it's standards for how you put together a medical process. You also have to be able, during that process of creating, to be able to have tracking procedures all the way through so that if something happens to anyone who has ingested a medicinal cannabis product, it can then be tracked all the way down to the particular product, to the particular manufacturing company, right down to the particular cultivation facility, right down to the row, and right down to the plant that that particular product came from. So, medicinal versus recreation. In the business of medicine or cannabis, come let us work together. Let's make the best of this.